Welcome everyone to Shamanic Sunday. Today I have Jason with me that is a shaman and I'm going to share with you the work Kim and I have been doing, some really cool things that we have coming up and we're going to do a shamanic ceremony with you tonight. So you're going to want to stay tuned for this. If you're here, let us know where you're tuning in from, say hello. If you have any special requests, any special type of healing work you would like done, let us know because we're here to help you tonight and to let you see some of the back end stuff that I keep telling you I've been working on as I have been stepping into more of my femininity. And in addition to that, from a whole and healed standpoint, where Jason and I have been doing some really intense, deep work together, bringing our our own techniques together, him being a background in massage therapy and me, my chiropractic and being able to heal mind, body, heart, soul, and every level. So I want to give him an official welcome through sharing with you more about his bio. So I'm just going to read it to you so I can stay on point and then I'm going to let him speak. Okay. <laughs> so this is Jason, the shamanic alchemist. And Jason Wolf is dedicated is a dedicated quantum healer with a foundation in shamanic alchemy. His skills stretch beyond the tangible into the metaphysical. As a licensed massage therapist and Reiki master, Jason collaborates with the galactic spiritual team, unlocking the mirrored mysticals ability, the mystical abilities. For 25 years, Jason submersed himself in the world of professional painting. However, a profound inner transformation no calling has nudged him towards a deeper purpose. So drawing on his own journey of self-discovery and healing, he has pivoted into the realm of holistic healing in a much broader, deeper way. And let me tell you, when I say much broader, deeper and expanded way, we're talking when he goes deep and expansive. So Jason's mission is to harmonize the physical, the mental and the spiritual facets of one's being in through shamanic practices with and merging that with traditional types of therapeutic techniques. So whether it's hands on in massage or whether it's the energy work, his objective is to bring healing to the mind, body and soul. And so Jason is definitely a go to healer. He's been my healer for several months now. And so he helps with if you're seeking, you know, some major transformation and yearn to embody all of the best version of you, I can promise you he's my go to. <laughs> Welcome, Jason. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> it's a blessing to be here. Thank you for the amazing uh, introduction. Uh, I feel just so blessed to be here to celebrate this with you and to uh, experience what um, our Shamanic Sunday um, um, ceremonies is going to be all about. Awesome. So I just want to say a little bit about the work we've done and the aspects. And actually, I'm going to let him also share this. And so I'm going to actually, the mic's a little bit over here, so I'm going to make sure we get because yeah, I'm not sure if they can hear too well, but, okay. um, but basically you guys have heard me talk about me wanting to get out into the community and do more VIPs and more one-on-one -on -one work again. It's been because of the work we've done together. And I knew whenever I was doing my own healing, it came down back from a fifth dimensional spiritual realm into a third dimension, actualizing and physical realm that I needed somebody that could help me bring my my soul back into my body. And so basically I was shown all the things I knew and I went to Jason and I said, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I need. And I need you to help me come into my body. But what it was really doing is helping me come into my body and helping him expand out into the realms that he wanted to expand into. So as I was coming in, he was going out. So everything we have done has been harmonically in contrast in some ways. And as I mentioned in what I just talked about in the show with Rise with Rays, he's been a part of helping me come into my femininity and I've been a part of helping him come into his masculinity. And in doing so, we have aligned every step of the way. And with that being said, I just have some really exciting news. It's official. I'm moving to Sedona Yay! in, in uh, <laughs> September 22nd. So I can't wait. And it's to do this work we're taught. I've been keep telling you I'm going to do is to go be there, to go get in person, to take people out into the vortexes, to be able to help them heal on a level that is in the actualizing and in person and help them come home to their body. And so with that being said, Jason's going to join me in the 
uh, retreat that I'm doing in October. So in October of October 3rd through 7th, you'll see a link in above or below, depending on where you are. You'll see that link. So check it out because he's going to be there. And tonight we just want to give you a little bit of a um, sample of what we've been doing for several months. And so Jason, I'm going to let you take it from here and share more about like maybe what that technique is or what we've done together. And then okay. let's show them whatever comes through. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, yeah. Please join us in Sedona. It is going to be life changing in every aspect. Uh, I can't wait to meet you and see you there. Um, what has begun to happen with me in harmony is so special and so unique. Um, when we get together, our energies provoke a level of openness and expansiveness that allows us to ground ourselves in our body and actually allows us to go into parts of our body that we can't get there alone. Mm -hmm. um, when we exchange, we always open space and we ask, what is it we're supposed to do? And each time it's been completely different. Mm -hmm. um, some of the greatest things that happen are the release of deep trauma, present life, past life. Um, heck, there can even be some future life stuff. Sometimes it's hard to tell. It gets so um, swirly and what comes up, you're just experiencing it. And as you experience this, the emotional charge and content that has held you maybe stuck or, or sad or just unable to fulfill like simple tasks gets pulled out of your body. And when that does, you feel more open and light. Your consciousness opens up to the point where you can receive information more clearly and you can take action in your daily life grounded and see the results um, of being able to manage your personal life a lot differently than not being grounded. And what I found is the more that we have gone deeper into allowing the energy to penetrate deep parts of our body, um, sometimes it gets intense, but it's so soothing and relaxing to experience some of the intensities. Mm -hmm. And we're always surrounded by the most beautiful beings. The angels come in, the archangels come in, the ancestors come in, and it, the room is filled with love. Um, our bodies are filled with love. And it we become recharged with, once we give up what we've been holding on to, we get recharged with love, with energy, with a whole new perspective. Um, and I was dying to get out of my body. Like, I want to go. I want to just go, go, go. I've gotten tastes of it all on my own before. But I knew that, uh, I guess two years ago, Army and I uh, came together through a friend. And through this friend, we began instantly to channel for each other. Um, I was channeling information from many different uh, sources. And uh, really, really rising. And then about a year ago is when we really started to come together consistently. And about four or five months ago, or maybe six months ago. Eight, eight, well, it was in January. January. Okay. So we did yeah, eight months. Wow. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So eight months ago, we really started to do deep work. And um, all I want to say is I've seen such a change in Dr. Harmony to her to step into a space where she feels comfortable just being this beautiful goddess and doing what she needs to do from that space and watch this imbalanced masculine energy that she was living in to protect herself and take care of her life become balanced in a way that now she can flow in between each. And it's so comforting to watch this healing take place and being a part of that and, and actually just being the, the channel for whatever she needs. It, it, it's, it's magnificent and magical. And it's, it's mind blowing, even though you know, and like we both do this kind of work and even to see it within ourselves is mind blowing. And each, and what's really bizarre, every session we do is different and everyone is like the best or the deepest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then that's like, how can we top that? Hello from Texas. Um, how can we top that? And then it just keeps evolving. And it's like, it's expanding and it just has grown in such a beautiful way to the point we were both in tears last time oh, gosh, yeah. saying and, and expressing our gratitude for each other because we would not be here with our individual selves without each other. Yes, most definitely. 
And I was stuck in such a feminine part uh, in my life. And it was almost crippling. I, I couldn't put into action the parts of me that I shut down due to circumstances that I've been going through for the last 20 years. And as these were breaking up and divine source was coming in and pushing things out. And then I would do my turn with harmony and she would be the channel and, and what would come through and reveal. I, I have let go of so much past life trauma, um, hundreds of deaths um, that were really keeping me feeling unsafe, unprotected uh, and, and, and not able to trust that everything is OK and everything is good. So these things were moving out. And as this was moving out, I was feeling like I have the power to stay within my heart, to stay within my body and bring all of this beauty that we're all trying to go outward to get, but to funnel that in here to the body and to the present so that we're not going anywhere. We are already in it. And that is opening up in so many different ways as we both clear. And sometimes the sessions aren't so deep sometimes they're just fun yeah. sometimes it's just a relaxing massage or a, 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 an adjustment and through that adjustment there's laughter there's talk about how good things are and then we'll get visitations from angels and there'll be messages the mirians the, come oh through. gosh yeah <laughs> that's when it's i mean it gets really really great when uh when it's multiple too yeah, <laughs> when yeah. it's Pleiadians, Lemurians, um, the Arcturians, they'll all come in with the ancestors and, and songs and healings and removals of energies and insertions of energies. It's, it's really complex um, and it's hard to put into words, but it is actually amazing to be experiencing some of that. So when we kind of like open it up tonight for that, I'm just excited to see what you'll get, see what kind of channeling goes. Uh, light languages will come through me. Um, that's one thing that that they'll communicate through a light language, and I never know which one it's going to be. Um, it could be through song, it could be through chant. Uh, it, it it gets quite amazing when um, the ancient ancestors, the old ones, come in with the medicine of the elements. Mm. That is very powerful. That is like so in the body that you are completely grounded and present in this love and it ignites everything we're looking for to have ignited in us and we're balanced and it's an easy ebb and flow. And uh, that's some of my favorite when that happens Yeah, um, because it feels raw, it feels real, it feels human and it, and it feels workable and doable. And there's such a deep trust with it that, that it's always work, it's always going to work, and it's never not going to work. I just want to say something about the trust thing, because the trust we've developed, we wouldn't be able to go that deep within each other if we didn't have that trust to open up. 100%. Uh, and that that took a little bit of time. And it would, uh, I would say, actually, by the fourth session, I was like, OK, just whatever we're going for, let's go. Um, it's been a journey, though. Like we literally go on journeys. Fair, yeah, it's it's kind of like um, it's kind of like a sacred ceremony with plant medicine. Um, mm -hmm. You'll experience it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, very visual, very very um, sensual, very um, all your senses will light up. Um, yeah. But you do go on a journey, and uh, so we're inviting you to take a journey with us tonight, and yeah. also meet us in Sedona in person to go through the retreat for five days that are going to be transformational i yes. mean the work we've done together has changed our own lives just in the matter of time as deep as we've already done and the power we bring together in that energy even magnifies what we've done together to help even others together so that's one of the things we also see coming and i've actually had a client reach out because i've talked about the work i've been doing with him and i've had people reach out to even want to work with him that's worked with me because i've talked about it and you know we've talked about doing even some in-person sessions and group healing with people with our energies together because of how powerful that is together and what we bring together in that. So check out the link to Sedona above or below. There is an early bird that's going to be through 9-9 of um, September and get plugged in. We'd love to see you in Sedona if you're just joining. I'm moving there in September of 2022. And so um, one more thing I want to say, and then we're going to, we're going to get in, dive into a ceremony, but I just want to say 
and he was talking about the journeys we were taking and how deep we go and different things that happen. One of the things he tapped into with me that I kept having this energy surging up my back that would wake me up and just surge. And I could just feel this energy just moving all in my back. And I was having trouble sleeping because the energy was so intense. And we finally got to the heart of him tapping into a dragon energy that's very ancient energy that had to be cleared out from that ancient wisdom of the dragon energy that had to be released before. I mean, and when he did that, I mean, I never felt it again like that. So that's how powerful we don't know where all this is coming from and other dimensions, obviously, sometimes, but we carry these ancient wisdom inside of us and these ancient tools inside of us and these ancient memories inside of us. And to bring this into your physical form, you have to clear out that ancient stuff to create the space for the new energy. And that's on mind, body, heart, and soul. So that's what we're here to help you with. Yeah. The thing I want to speak on real quick before we jump into yeah. that is bypassing. I was thinking about this a lot today. Um, there is no bypassing. You can ignore all the things that are in your body and, and stay high and happy. Um, but at, potentially in some other lifetime, you'll have to face that. You'll have to clear that um, if possible. Um, so while it's here, while it's present, while we're in this beautiful transition into the new golden age. Uh, I'm all for getting the work done. Falling in love with the shadow part of you is just as important as falling in love with the light part of you. The shadow part of you is a fuel that is indescribable. Um, embracing that part of you as though it's an entity and bringing it into you and holding space for that and seeing the beauty in how it operates. That is so significant and so important and nothing to be afraid of. The more you turn in and love this shadow, which most people in here, I would assume, would know this, the better and brighter you shine in both ways. The more you're able to support your shadow, the shadows be able to support your light. And I just really feel like that is such a component that we have tapped into to embracing what has been, what is, and what will be once we embrace all of us, the body, mind, and soul. Absolutely. I just want to acknowledge a few people here because we asked everyone to say hello, where are you tuning in from? So we have people that are from Missouri. We have Australia. Ray's is back with us. We just did the Rise with Ray show. We have Anna from Texas. We have Dawn from Oregon. And um, Ray's is just commenting about falling in love with your shadow side of yourself yes yes cool. yes so <laughs> yeah. all right all right all right yeah they've been knocking at the door yeah. Yeah. yeah so so here we go oh, we don't yeah. we don't even know what's happening here yeah we don't know no, this is great um oh so Experience. They are celebrating and lighting the fire and igniting this whole experience that we're going to go through for the next few weeks. And uh, 
it's already warming up for Sedona. <laughs> uh, that was, yeah, it was very strong, very powerful. The fire element is now active. So we are entering this with a fire ceremony. Um, mm -hmm. To clarify, I've never reached out to any native anything. Uh, I don't listen to native songs. I don't listen to anything native uh, on purpose. So everything I channel can be authentic. Uh, every beat authentic, every every sound, every tone, anything that comes through is authentic. I don't want to be in the way or have a mind full of anything. Um, so when they come in, uh, they play this drum, they sing the song. I have no idea the words that are coming. Um, I just allow my vessel to express that. I see the image and I get the message. And uh, it's quite magnificent. Uh, this was all about the beginning of starting a fire ceremony. And some of my friends, my dear friends, uh, that I've learned a lot uh, of how to call in ceremony, how to call in fire ceremony, which I'll explain briefly. Um, in order to begin a ceremony for a weekend, uh, we would we would create a fire. We would create uh, blessings that we want to throw in the fire and requests. And in doing so, we're calling to the divine spirits, the divine source, all of eternity. Um, and as this fire opens, it's creating a portal. And as we send the messages in with gratitude and with respect, the ancestors come in and give us the answers and guidance from the way they see it. So um, that and is we, I'm sorry. In Sedona, we open with a fire ceremony and the evening at the Peace Garden um, before as we move through the retreat in that five days in October. So I, as you just said, I didn't even realize this since you said it, this is the opening portal for that. Yes, <laughs> and we didn't even, I didn't even know that's what was going to happen, but that's what's happening. So, wow. Uh, And the poor asset is shit a cure on the poor a la a ha a cure honest at a shit. The poor on a color oil a ha the cure all the euro and queer a shit. The key. So, uh, that was a beautiful demonstration of an ancestor coming in, doing an energetic adjustment, clearing, cleansing, refilling and uh, allowing that process to happen. So um, this is some of the things you possibly could experience when you allow us to be in your field, be in your space, give us the permission to channel this healing for you. Um, and, and what will happen and what usually happens, and, and I'm kind of going to speak for Dr. Harmony, but she can correct me at any time. When this happens, the energy goes in, and once this energy sets in, it takes a day, it takes two days, it takes a month, and it will break up what's there. And you will process, you will release emotions, you will understand some of the programs you're running. You understand that I've held this hurt over my high heart on the right here for my, my masculine, my father, my cousin, my uncle, my brother, whoever was this pain. And you'll see the visions of this possibly, or you'll feel intuitively who it is and what it is. And when that energy gets in there, you will work with releasing that. So if you were having shoulder pain, neck pain, headaches, anything in the ribs, any part of this area that was locked up in any way, discomfort, or just in a position where you're, you're kind of forward, instead of relaxed, drop shoulders and, and movable, um, 
once this is released, your body is going to be able to accept that flow of love in there. And I see here someone said they've seen a serpent coming up. A lot of this mm -hmm. is going to open up kundalini. A lot of this mm -hmm. is going to open you up and allow this energy to come up. And then to express itself in your fullness of your body and then out your arms. You know, bringing it up into the throat. And just with the breath, bringing it up in the eye and the head and through your crown. And just letting it cycle around you. And it feels different to different people. It could be vibrational. It could just be motion. It could just be heat. It could be throbbing, um, sparkles. It, it, it's quite amazing how it feels for different people. For me, I always feel the energy like a giant wave and then an expansion. And then I feel divine love come in. And when I feel the love come in, I know that I'm being stabilized in my, my whole complete self, body, mind, and soul, spirit, higher self, physical body. All of it is in alignment. And now this area is open to receive to where before... It just was a little blocked from something I didn't want to let go of. Maybe I didn't even know I had it. It, it doesn't even matter. I'm, I'm, I'm open to experience what's in my body. And that's that's kind of what happens, I think. So Yeah. And the more open you are, the deeper the healing. Yes. And so one of the things that <clears throat> just the process of like, a, like my mind's really scientific. So the process I went through in this for myself, even the work I've done in the last eight years intentionally. When you go through this kind of work, you're going through a process of clearing out what's not working. You are correcting the imbalances of the energy that has been cycling in the wrong pattern. Mm. Then you are connecting or connecting to energy that is healing and sealing and the fragments and that's creating the intersector of that energy that's helping the flow now so it's like if you think about breaking something apart and like say electrical cord and you have electrical cord and it breaks yeah, you don't get you don't get the flow but that new energy after you clear out comes in and goes right to that place it knows to do it and it creates the intersector or the conduit to help the energy heal that energy so now you're back to flow once you do that in a sense and the energy is flowing now you get to bring in the divine energy now you can connect to your higher self now you can connect to the akashic records and all of the truth of who you are and begin to embody that energy and when i say embody it the difference in that like we were talking about is actualizing the true you from the higher self that can't come in if you can't pull in that information into you. The other thing I think is really good about, you know, my chiropractic background and his massage therapy yeah. practice yeah. is the physical components of that, of being able to like connect it. And when I say connect it, like glue it back together because so many people have PTSD they're having uh, hypersensitivity and they have went through soul shock, traumas, triggers, emotional pain that they've left their body multiple times. And that's what happened to me. And so I felt all fragmented. I felt all my soul was outside of me. When you can now clear all the patterns we're talking about in the physical being, in the energetic meridians within the body, and you purge out because the body has the memory of storing in it, what that trauma is that's been in the soul. Now you have a place for it to come home. And what I, I knew this and I saw this and I knew I could do it for someone, but I didn't have no one to do it for me. And that's when I went to Jason and I said, I need this and I know you can do this. And what started happening is I drew diagrams and I would yeah. go through the diagrams. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they were beautiful him, too. I mean, they were so beautiful. <laughs> and I would give him like all of the, the information and I would show him. And, and what he would say is like, well, I never put this into words, but I see this. I know this. I feel this. And I said, so I need to come home to my body and I need you to help me. Mm, yeah, yeah. And so then coming home to the body is how I stop being hypersensitive, mm. how I, my, I no longer, my body no longer has that tiger chasing it. That's that fight or flight. I can be in public now and 
come into this place of home to myself. And, and now one of the things that's what I'm saying with the whole physical aspect, what I know for a fact, all that spiritual work, you can't do that. And it's just technically in spiritual, it has to be physical. Yeah. It has to, like, you have to like get it out of the body to do I that. Have to. That is why I've been called a community. That is why I'm moving to Sedona. That is why we're having the retreat in Sedona to help people do this. And it's just going to be amazing. And we hope to see you there. Um, check out the links above and below. And if you coming in, we did a little sample of some of the ceremony stuff because we're going to have, we brought in the fire energies tonight that we didn't know was coming in, opening the fire portal for the, the retreat as well. Um, we will be having a fire ceremony, a shamanic fire ceremony to open the portal of the retreat itself. Do you have anything specific else you want to do, Ab, say? Um, yeah, I'd like to tell a little bit about how you've helped uh, yeah. get me out of my body. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, a lot of the work that I experience when Dr. Harmony gets into my field is uh, tons of past life um, and tons of present life that's been affected by past lives that are patterns that have been created over and over and over. Um, and I'll just say last week, I'll get really intimate and open with you. And, yeah, and you share anything you yeah. want about me too. Okay, if it great. comes up, share anything you need to share. It's yeah, okay. okay. Um, so we got into my hips because I just felt like I was stuck in my hips and this energy was coming and going and I, I've been able to clear most of it. And I've done so much work in my lower chakras. It, it, it blows my mind. And we were actually uh, working in there deeply and it got deeper and deeper and there was past lives where i was molested uh over and over and over and raped by men and forced to have sex with men and this is all pouring out and and i'm watching it happen and i'm feeling all of this like pain and stress and just fear and and i can see how this has kept me very tight in my body this has kept me not wanting to express my sexuality openly and to feel sexual energy safely. It has kept me like shy and like, you know, and a lot of the life pattern is, Hey, you're not allowed to be a sexual creature and that's gross. So after unlearning all that and getting into the parts that reinforce that belief system, now I feel comfortable just opening up to my own sexuality. There's no need to do anything physical with it. It is about just feeling that creative, sexual, powerful energy and letting that come into your body and holding that just like now and just feeling very comfortable in such a sacred energy, just an energy that's safe and pleasant. And see, there's, there's nothing that has to be done with that. It could just be felt. And this energy can be built up and used as creative energy as we bring this up into the next portion of our body, into our lower belly. And as we're breathing in there, we start thinking about creativity. So then we need to clear sexual relationships, beliefs with parents, beliefs with mother and father. That's a lot of where my stuff was. And it, it just, this is how it's molded how I interact with people. This is how I can't express myself. So I have these things coming up and, and releasing through tears. I'm a, I'm a big crier. I love crying. That is the best way for me to release. And as all this flushes out of my system, then I feel the joy. Then I feel the peace. And then just kind of open that up a little bit. Let's hold that. I can hold that in comfort. And purity and beauty and feel safe within myself and feel that energy and i can take this anywhere i can give myself this gift anytime and before i couldn't i couldn't even acknowledge that that was a real part of me mm. and now i can and i own that and i'm responsible for that i use it for the light of the world so this is some of the benefit we always talk about the heart always talk about the heart this is the new this is the new root chakra that's all probably right but i am a big fan of the lower chakras because we are here on earth right now we're going to be here on earth until we transition and if this isn't in its right space to express itself in its purest beautiful form that you can allow out and create and fuel that with the heart. Let the heart be the fuel 
for this to express itself through creation. Um, I don't know. This is what I experience. This is the mm -hmm. healings I get. And then that allows me to explode into the realm of whatever I experience. So this is what I experience when Dr. Harmony gets into, when I trust her and I relax and I just let her do whatever comes through. So if this is something that's really sparking um, a feeling in you, this is possibly what you'll experience in Sedona. The last thing I'd like to say, I've been to Sedona twice this year. Both um, were mind blowing for me. When I go to Sedona, I become an extraterrestrial. It's unbelievable. I love it. I love it. I don't want to leave. He says he's coming to stay for a month. <laughs> yeah, I am. I will actually pay all my bills and, and just go to sit in Sedona. I don't need to do anything but absorb and learn. Um, it is magical there. If you are sensitive in any way, times that times 100, the minute you get into the airspace, I guarantee it. It is a life-changing experience just to be in Sedona, which from my perception is the root chakra of Mama Pachu, Gaia, Mother Earth, the beautiful queen she is. This is where it all happens. This is why it's red. It's the ocean of life. It's still there. Once was there, it's still there. When you get in there, you can see it and feel it. You can hear the whales. You can hear the dolphins. It is it is an unbelievable trip. And if you're with us and you're healing and we are allowed to help you raise and you raise us and we all start building this energy, mm -hmm. you can take off. You, you can be flying. Yeah, you, you'll be flying <laughs> in your body as you're walking down the street, handling your business. And what better experience is having them both at the yeah. same time be in the fifth while you're in the third operating in both now that's magic to me so that's kind of what i'm about that's kind of like what i feel like we're about mm -hmm. um bringing it all together so yeah so, i guess that's it a <laughs> couple things i want to piggyback on so um one of the things in these sessions he's talking about visions we have the same visions so like when he was talking about being molested in the past life and i was working into his groins and i was moving all that energy yeah. before he even like told me like i already knew that he had been molested and it was multiple times it was multiple experiences and so in that we just tend to see the same things and it's it's mind-blowingly bizarre but when we go on the journey we do see the same things so that's really cool and the other thing I wanted to say about when we go and do this work, some of it's going to be inside, some of it's going to be outside in Sedona for the retreat. And so we're going to be going into the three of the four major vortexes in Sedona Ooh. to literally <laughs> like anchor in this light, to anchor in your true self. And so a piece of it's going to be about letting go of who you've been um, on every dimension, every level, um, mind, body, heart, and soul, past present, even future contracts so that we can let go of everything that's been holding you back and clear mm -hmm. that out mm -hmm. so that we can then tap in and bring that energy and wake into what that true you is. And then in the between that, clearing out and teaching you how to become your own healer, Whew. teaching you how to awaken the inner healer and the power in you to transmute, transform and move this energy out of your body. So you stop being so hypersensitive. So you stop being um, continually going through loops and cycles that repeat themselves and make you feel stuck because it comes down to a choice of what you want. Who are you? So yeah. that's where we're going to also look at who are you? Yeah. Who do you want to be? And not just from what you mentally think, but from the Akashic Records and from the higher self and uh, tap into that true self. For you to embody it while you're there and then we map out the plan of how you're going to actualize it and bring it into your reality and i can tell you this is what i've been doing for months upon end but this last few months that we've been working like wow. this is what i have been doing and this is how i am out of nowhere moving to sedona that i didn't know i was going to do that was part of the plan which is why i wasn't getting clear and we get these forks in the road and it's like it's because a lot of people are living in a past and in the future at the same time we still are connected physically to all these parts of ourselves. We have not changed in our reality or things that are running in us unconscious patterns. And then we can see something. We know something. We feel something. We desire something. And we're stepping into something. But we're split between two worlds here. And so this retreat is about bridging your gap. 
and bringing you home and bringing the, the convergence of past and future into the now. So you can step forward into all it is you came here to do, be, and have, and do it from a place of authenticity and a place that you can truly shine and be the best version of you. Woo. All right. I have uh, a feminine shaman who would like to express another message if you've got time for that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> So yes, welcome the feminine who joined, be prepared. Be prepared to be blessed. Be prepared to be fulfilled. Be prepared to move to the level that you want to move to, to experience the life that you want to experience internally. You're going to be fully supported. They are already setting the stage for all of your healing. They already know who's coming. It's quite amazing. They're sending love, blessings of safety, protection. This is actually it's very powerful. Uh, she was from Sedona. This this was a Navajo woman, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, she was just wishing you all the well and setting it up for you to receive many blessings. Yeah. And I got to tell you, like the whole thing about that with me moving to Sedona, that was also an initiation for me. Mm, yeah. Like in that opening portal because of me stepping into my femininity and do it. That's the other thing about all of what we're doing and all of this work that we're doing and all of us are doing. And in the retreat is being able to come more into the balance of not only your masculine and feminine, but to literally step forth in a new way in the feminine healed way that says divine grace sees and flow where we don't have to work so hard. We don't have to show up and push that we can receive. And so it's about you coming up and receive. And with that being said, we do have somebody asking, are we taking questions tonight? And oh, yeah, that's cool. TM. So yes, absolutely. Yeah. So um, TM, if you have a question, anybody has a question, like be sure to ask and uh, we will answer. Are you still with us, TM? That looks like you might've said that just a few minutes ago. Um, hopefully you're still with us. And hello, Monica. Thank you for joining. And yes, Jeremiah, freedom and love. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> Um, yes, the serpent. And I don't know, Ray's, if you're still with us, Ray's from the Rise with Ray shows was with us a little bit ago, hanging out with us. Tim, oh, you're definitely still here, Tim. If you were here like back when we started, you were here right before we went live. I oh, saw your, no. your message come up. So um, what what would your question be, Tim? And anybody else have a question, be sure to let us know. Um, and while we're waiting for that, just um you know, make sure to check out the links above and below. And if you're just joining us, they were here. Um, we're going to be doing the shamanic Sundays for most every Sunday through September till at least up until the 22nd. So it's like five, five tonight and four more Sundays. And then what I was shown today, <laughs> it's not going to stop. <laughs> oh my I don't God. know oh, when yeah, it was yeah. happening, but it's going to continue oh somewhere, somehow, something. So it, yeah. it may not be like consistent, but it's, gonna, it's, it's just the opening, honestly. Yeah. And we don't even know what's coming. We just know that we're being called to do something. And we also know that we're being called to do it a lot together. So Yes. And I'll, I'll give you a heads up. I'm, I'm a full body channeler. So uh, like the people channel Cryon or Adirondack, those, those beautiful channelers. I do that. Uh, I embody them, as you've seen, and they come through me. Um, it, it, it even gets way more cooler. Uh, I'll just put it that way. But I just want to let you know that there is a line behind me right now of hundreds that want to come through and speak to you, that have so many beautiful messages for you. 
Um, we're talking from Arcturians, Lemurians to ancestors of many different types. Uh, and um, I can allow them in to transmute, trans or communicate for you what you need. And I, I was going to try to do a little demonstration of pick someone out, but I'm being told that tonight we're just opening it up and and and, and letting you know who we are as as real people um, who've who've had real life experiences, who are tapping into um, our, our gifts and tapping into our purpose. Um, and you know, uh, through Reiki is how this started for me. So Reiki is always very important for me. I love Reiki. It just kind of flows as soon as I think about it. And um, that is just such a calming energy mm -hmm. that allows so much deep healing. Um, so, and as that opens, then they want to come through. So it, it's quite a combination to experience. I would like to say, since no one's asking questions. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll be really transparent of what I've had to face over the last five years. And, and this has started for me five years ago. Um, I have, uh, was alcoholic. I, I was consumed with alcoholism and I, I no longer have that issue. Mm -hmm. Um, I was codependent and that is broken. Um, now I am interdependent <laughs> <laughs> and that feels really good. Uh, I'm not perfect. I, I still have triggers and they go off like bombs and uh, I have tools that I can deal with those. Um, I've sought out counseling to learn how to manage the things. I was um, brought up in a, a very tough environment. So I have complex PTSD. I used to suffer from that, but through this work, it, is, it just healed my nervous system in ways that I would have never got there through any therapy. Um, and I've done therapy, intense therapy for that. And as the energy and the channeling and that, that is what's really shifted. I was once diagnosed with bipolar. I do not have that anymore. That is gone. Depression, gone. I don't experience the life that I used to anymore. I actually experience a life kind of at an even keel level and it goes up, it stays up, then it comes down, it stays down, then it goes up. And I just go on, I'll do it backwards because it's backwards. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, like that. Do you like, yeah, we're yeah. we're reverse. <laughs> um, but there's a flow now to my life that's there that was never there before. I was either in rock bottom or skyrocketed off this planet and I had no balance. Now I have a line that I can cruise and it's more like this. Sometimes I go like that, but when I go like that, I get to come down into what I need to see. Then I come back like this. So it's actually quite a beautiful experience. And I, um, I just want to invite you to, if you're not experiencing that, to give yourself an opportunity to be available to experience that. Yeah, definitely. Well, Raise, you're still here. <laughs> yes, you said you're still here. When it's beautiful and so powerful. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we'll be back um, for the next four Sundays sharing more shamanic tools. Let's see here. We have our, our question. Let's put this up here. Mm -hmm. So how can you tell if one of our twin flame, when it's, if, how can we tell if one is our twin flame or a karmic? Okay. So really quick on that. We actually just did a show on that specifically and talked about that with the Rise with Rays show. So I would highly recommend that you go to the live we just did tonight with the Rise with Rays and watch that because we went into really deep, a deep connection with that. But with that being said, I'm going to also bring up this with Jason being here, because as I mentioned in that show, that he is also a mirrored reflection of me and me, him, and that we do so much work together. Hey, love you, Connie. Yeah. Um, we do so, so much work together that it becomes more powerful. And so we definitely mirror each other in so many ways. And we, we carry all of that. So I'm going to see if you want to answer that in comparison because I gave an answer, but let's hear your answer. I would love that. to answer yeah. that. I actually have an answer to that okay, because good. I've experienced both. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have been married for 20 years. I'm in the process of um, ending, ending that. Okay. Um, and I love her with all of my heart and she's a magnificent, beautiful woman. And that was a karmic relationship. And in that karmic relationship, was a lot of work, a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of energy. And for me, 
in spite of anything that she brought to the relationship, I felt tons of pain. I felt tons of struggle. I, I felt tons of conflict. And I was working, 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 working always to be this better person. For me, that's karmic because there's a do and a, there's a do to pay. And in that do, it's effort. It's hard. You know, it's like the love is there. Everything that you are good with a relationship is there. But if the underlying tone is you're doing work all the time, to me, that's karmic. Now, I experienced um, a twin flame and, and experiencing the twin flame. There was no work whatsoever. It was effortless. It was almost like, is this real? This can't be real. This can't even be happening. Um, but it is an effortless connection where everything makes sense. Everything is flowing together. But what I will say about the beautiful twin flame connection is they can get to the deepest part of your heart that no one else can. The deepest part of you just by one word or two little actions, it'll trigger a part of you that doesn't feel like work. But it feels like I have to face this, take care of this, and love myself through this one and learn what's going on. So that is my answer to you, Tim, is that if it's work all the time, that's karmic. If it is fun most of the time, but deep penetrating, then that is twin flame. So what I want to say about that is if you've been, he hasn't, doesn't even know this, but that's what Ray's and I keep saying about stop doing the work. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. We created yeah. an entire program on stopping <laughs> yeah. doing the work. And, and we just said in this last show <laughs> to be able to accept who you are as you are yourself before somebody else can. So Ray's and I, if you go to that show we just did, you're going to find there a five day challenge of the perfect dinner work is to stop doing the work because you are okay and enough the way you are. So that is beautiful because that is so true. And now what I have for you. Yeah that is really cool because what he said is spot on on point but this is what the last show was about and i was using you as an example there oh, cool. as i mentioned yeah. <laughs> so how do you and i fit into that meaning like you see what i'm saying because people get confused on who that is based on they get these connections and we definitely have a twin flame connection definitely there's no work here this is all play the difference between it being like Let's just take uh, intimate, physical out of the relationship because that's not how we interact. It is effortless. This is just pure like, hey, how you doing? And we just get into the flow, but we always get to the deepest part of each other. Like tonight, when this closes, we could probably spend 15 minutes together and we would get somewhere on each other that needs to be opened up. We've already done it being here. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, right, really. <laughs> Because we, yeah, yeah, like yeah. when we before we started, we both had we always do this. Like we both had. I'm becoming vegan. I'm like I had to have a cheeseburger today. He goes, I had a cheeseburger today. I, and like I we do to, these yeah. things all the time. Like yeah. so, and like he's like, I've been feeling like this, this, and this today. I'm like, I felt just like that today. And then I said, it's like going through molasses. And so we feel the same things all the time. All the time. Our, our check-ins are We like... check in just because we know where each other are. Like, And it never fails. Every day, every part of the journey, we're on the same journey and know and feel the same thing. Yep. Right. So yep. that's where people also think that sometimes that, so you have that with somebody, it's their twin flame. That's why I'm bringing this up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it is like, that's why I was curious as to how you would explain that different from yeah the like if you could because yeah. that's where it's hard to distinguish except for what i said the other is that we're like facilitators facilitating to our next levels basically so mm -hmm. we kind of talked about that mm -hmm. um where in that i was talking about how the karmic part bring that's the karmic is like sort of like the false twin flame where the true twin flame ends up becoming giving back to you who you are Yes. yes. That's what I said in the show. Yeah. And the way you give it in all levels. Yeah. You know, because I think you and I give a lot of levels, but not every level. No. Right. So yeah. that's the, would be the difference. And that, is, that is the difference. That's another difference. Yeah. Yeah. Then be added upon. Yeah. For sure. Right. Mm. Right. Okay. There we go. Let's see. Yes. Yes. Jason, beautifully put. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Isn't he great? Oh, thank you. Um, so do I have a main guide that I work with? Well, 
I have about 25 main guides that I work with. Um, not just one. Um, mm -hmm. They all visit me the same. Um, it changes. Like for instance, uh, for two or a week, I was uh, being um, visited and worked with uh, Oren from um, the Arcturian um, Council of Light. And uh, I would go to Arcturia. They would, it was just beautiful. And I would work with him and learn sacred geometry and light body and, and, and singing these beautiful songs. And, and then that would fade out. And then Archangel Michael would be with me. Uh, I would just be hanging out or Metatron or um, um, Jophia will come in for a period of time. Uh, Chamuel, they all, they all just shift in um, the council of light. I, I've channeled crime. I've channeled Adirondack. Uh, they'll. Oh, you said you channeled Matt Khan last week. Oh, I did. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, it was beautiful. Like I just called out to him and, and uh, boom, I just got this beautiful message from him about actually how to work in my feminine energy uh, it, in combination with my masculine to balance it in an area of my life. And I was just like, oh my God, thank you. <laughs> so um, that's kind of how it works for me. I, I have, uh, they all seem to spend the same amount of time with me. I will say this, if you are calling out to guides, if you're calling out for that relationship, really celebrate who you want to speak to. Mm. I call in divine source, all of the archangels, all of the angels, all of the multidimensionals, all the ancestors, check and check and rainbows, fairies, gods. That is what I call to the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom. I call to everything and I ask them to come and infiltrate my life. Like I want them to work with me. I want to be of service to them. Um, and, and, and my mentor was the one who told, showed me how to do that through his demonstration. So the key here to guides I believe if you are meant to, and if your system is set up to do that type of work, you will have more access to as many as you want, um, just by being open and asking them to be a part of your life. Yeah, that's awesome. And then I call it ask, listen, allow. You've probably heard me say that, raised. You know, you ask for what you need. You ask to make the connection. You ask to be shown the signs. You ask for direction. And you say, sh I say, show me your energy. Who are you? And then, like, like the first time I ever connected with Commander Ashtar, I just had an experience of being woken up by Jesus in the middle of the night telling me it was time to go. And I felt myself coming out of my body. And it's startled me because I never had went out of my body the way I felt it. And I was, I was awake. And basically whenever I, that happened, he's like, do not be afraid. And so I surrendered and he's basically, I merged with him energetically. Now I then went back to sleep and I woke up at 444 and I felt like I had went to the penthouse or something to a whole new level of like all my guides and my friends, like, where do my friends go? And they all like backed up for me to ascend into more of the galactic connections. Now, that didn't mean I lost all those connections, but it meant they had to back up for me to expand into this new elevation. And so without even knowing anything, you just know, you just wake up. So like all of a sudden I'm like waking up and I'm drawing star patterns at 444 in the morning. And I'm like, who are you? And it's like, I'm Commander Ashtar. And then the head of the Galactic Confederation. And I, nobody's told had told me that. You just know. So you ask what you need. You listen to yeah. yourself and, you know, the intuition and the gifts. Ask for those gifts to awaken. And that's another piece of some of this work that we do is can help you embody those gifts because it's like we jumpstart your battery like that, you know. And it it's like getting a jumpstart to be able to zap you. So I, I walk around even with a Chinese delivery man. He walks up and looks at me about zap, like, you know, goes like this and about falls down with the, the food, you know? <laughs> like, I'm like walking taser to these people, you know? Like, zoop. <laughs> I'll tell you that I had a, I was, I was opening it. I'll keep this. I was opening at a space I was at and uh, 
and I was just letting myself open and I, and I was actually talking with the Pleiadians a little bit and like just really feeling that. And the person came up to me and I mean, they did not like that energy. They, they looked at me, asked me a question and I mean, dang near ran away from me. And I was just like, got up and I was like, where are you going? <laughs> uh, it's kind of interesting. The energy that it, engulfs you when you are actually experiencing a relationship with a guide yeah it's quite yeah quite and what i will tell you too is like when i work with people on a deeper level let's put it back up when i've worked with people on a deep level and they have certain spirit guides that they work with me it's like they you adopt them and then now they become part of your team and now you go forward and you use that team to help with other people and you just sort of they become a team and they just come in and you start to learn with them communicate with them understand them feel their energy um, one of my very first books that really helped me understand the energy of just if you really want to do it you start with the archangels and the angels because they're the closest to the human form that can help us really connect on a level till you know you expand off of that and reading um, the book Archangels 101, which is how I moved in here and I was praying this, this unit numbers 101 and I was leaving an ending relationship and I had my choice between this unit, which was stretching me or somewhere else. And I closed my eyes and said a prayer, show me which, because I'd just been studying out of this book, Archangel 101. And I said, show me which one I should choose. And then I pick up this book to read it and there's 101 on the book. You know, and so, and now the, you know, like where, as if you're just joining, I am moving to Sedona and it was all been divinely guided in the same way. Everything I've known about getting into the community, going back into some in-person VIP days, in-person healing sessions, retreats, getting back into the physical dimension with people. That is a piece of what I know I've been called to do, and it's going to happen in Sedona. And if you're just joining, we're going to be facilitating a retreat there in October. So make sure to check out the links above and below. And um, there's an early bird special good through 9-9. And we really appreciate you joining us tonight. And we will be back over the next four weeks before I leave for Sedona. And also, if you're just joining, this has been an opening fire ceremony tonight, opening the portal through the next four weeks that we're going to be doing this that will lead us straight into the work we'll be doing physically in Sedona yeah opening it with a fire ceremony at the peace garden there and um we would love to have you join us so yes, please do <laughs> thank you so much and thank yeah. you Jason oh, oh, <laughs> Hmm. all right please join us next week there is so much more coming your way yeah so much more please come back bring your healing modalities next week you would like with yourself or what you would like to experience because tonight was more of an introduction of us and what we're doing what we've done together and different things and so come join us next week and we'll dive deeper into some healing okay yeah. One last thing, yep. what we will do next week is we will put on a demonstration how to call guides in and, and let you watch them come in to us if, if they're willing to, um, if they want to present that um, technique to you. We'll, we'll call them in. I'll show you a set thing that I've learned how to do to open myself up to receive that. And then you'll be able to probably see or feel the energy come in. And that way you would be able to recognize what that might feel or look like for you in the future when you try this. So I'll love to share that with you. Awesome. Okay, everyone. Right, blessings, blessings, everyone. Oh, and you're, you're, thank you. Virtual hug team. Thank you for joining Hi, everyone. Guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, note, get the notification bell, and you'll know when we come live next week. Bye for now.